To those of you who earn a good salary in a low-stress job, what do you do? I'm a medical radiation technologist. I think my job is one of the least stressful. We don't work long hours like nurses and doctors, and our only main priority is to take diagnostic images of patients. But once we're done, they're taken away by porters, so we spend little time on patients. At the end of the day, when we finish our hours, we just head home and relax. I find it a relaxing job. Gets easier the better your skill set, and there's usually people to help you. This is strictly for x-rays only, not CT or MRI of which is more stressful since you're on a schedule. I kind of like my job. I'm an operator at a nuke plant. I make up to 180k depending on how much overtime I work. If I don't work overtime, I make 140k and only work 32 to 48 hours a week. It's shift work, which can take a toll, but it's a union job and we're treated very well. It's low stress in a sense where if you can pass the monthly exams demonstrating your knowledge of nuclear plant operations, you shouldn't be concerned. But if you're not as book smart as the rest of the crew, you can have some problems passing the initial training you receive and the continuing. So moral of the story, if you can pass the training, it's very low stress. I'm a truck driver, home every day. Just listen to music and watch the sunrise. Make about 80k. Could make much more if I put in the hours. The worst is having people complain about you existing. Just gotta have a screw mentality. I wouldn't recommend truck driving to others though. It's very hard to get a good paying job. I got very lucky and had a home daily company hire me the moment I got my commercial driver's license. Long haul drivers actually make less than home daily drivers, which nobody seems to understand. Deckhand on a tugboat in New York for $385 a day. Next promotion to mate for $580 a day. And captain is $670 a day. We live in the boat and go up and down the East Coast for two weeks. Then we get two weeks off work. Most of the time we eat free food and watch satellite TV. I bring my Xbox and play a couple hours every day using my phone as a hotspot. Literally straight chilling for two weeks with friends. I guess my job is not low stress or high paying to most people, but it checks both boxes for me as a single 24 year old male. I work rural EMS in Canada. My schedule is 96 hours on followed by 96 hours off. In other words, I work 4 straight days and then get 4 days off. I live in a big city, but the town I work in is an hour and 40 minutes away. So my commute is not that terrible when you consider that I only need to make the drive once every 4 days. When I am actually at work, I can do whatever I want as long as we don't get a call. My company sets us up with a nice staff house, satellite TV, Wi-Fi, and a decent gym. I spend my days playing video games with my co-workers, there's four of us on a shift, watching TV or movies, cooking, eating, working out, taking a nap, and just hanging out with my co-workers. If we do get a call, we have eight minutes to respond, so I can lounge around in pajamas all day if I want, and if I need to run an errand in town, I can usually get it done without getting more than eight minutes away from the station. The calls can be kind of crappy, lots of highway accidents and farming accidents, but I find the really crappy ones are are few and far between. Most of the calls are just driving people who don't feel well to the hospital, but I do enjoy the tough calls because they challenge me to make quick decisions and use my skills. In 96 hours, we usually average about 5-6 to six calls. However, I've literally worked 96 hours without a single call on more than one occasion. Regardless, I never take the work home with me. I make around 70000 per year with good benefits and there are a lot of opportunities to pick up extra shifts, which are paid a double time. In-house graphic designer for a pretty large retail company. We stay busy, but there isn't any of the stress that comes from working at an agency and having to please several different clients or worrying about getting enough work as a freelancer. I ultrasound hearts and vascular systems in a doctor's office for $35 an hour. Super laid back. If you're fast enough, half your time is free time. I manage to trade stocks, read, learn something new, and just generally keep extra time filled with something interesting. I teach English in China, 12 hours a week, roughly $2,700 US a month, and that's with almost all living expenses paid. One return flight a year, three months off a year, but I'm paid for 11 months. I know I'll never get rich, but I make way more than I could spend considering the cost of living here. I could easily save 2000 US a month. I have plenty of time to pursue my hobbies, and even my time in the office is very relaxed, as my classics are so basic. 
I work quality control on electrical and mechanical projects. It's simple. Read the original proposal and the 100% specifications and don't let the subcontractors waver from them. Keep the customer happy by showing them you're all about giving them what they paid for. It has its moments where it can get pretty hectic, but 90% of the time it's laid back and stress free. I am noticing that quality assurance seems to be one of the main jobs on this post. I sit behind a desk and design do-it-yourself home theater and automation systems. People send in their floor plans and I put little speaker and TV images where they should install stuff. And I troubleshoot the systems over the phone too. Easiest money I've ever made. And I get paid pretty good. I'm a personal assistant for a really high-end real estate agent. First few months was stressful, constantly trying to work out how he operates. But now that I've worked it out, I get everything done in advance for him and spend most of my day just chatting with others in the office, drinking coffee, and going on Reddit. I despise working. I've always hated it. I thought I would grow out of it. But at 27, I just seem to dislike it even more. So to find a job I can be excellent at with minimum effort and stress that pays me well is a dream. I also start early and don't take lunch, so I'm home in good time to my doggo. I'm a college professor. If you find a field you love, you get to talk about your favorite thing for 15 hours a week, earn the income of a full-time job, and get several months off a year. Air quotes because you use that time for grading and prepping stuff for the next semester. And of course, you work longer than 15 hours a week. But what that work consists of varies widely. If community college, it's pretty chill, mostly meetings and waiting for students to see you. Research positions vary in responsibilities. Specialized schools could be chill or more demanding, but there's potential for the majority of your time outside the classroom to be up to you and how you spend it. I'm a senior accountant for an oil and gas company. It's kind of a small family operated company. The president of the company takes very good care of the employees and their families in terms of compensation, bonuses, and benefits. Unlike other larger oil and gas companies that have been hit hard in recent years, this one is still very much in the black. Make no mistake, the actual work is very busy and fast paced. My career has advanced pretty fast here, going from knowing nothing about oil and gas industry to being one of the three most senior accountants here in just a few short years. Always something new to learn and skills to advance. Really, it's not just the career role itself that makes it low stress, but the place you work as well. The respect the company and people here have for each other is a rare find. Everyone loves their job, and the company is always pushing and making good on the ideal that employees are their biggest asset. Both people above and below me are highly talented, respectful, and very easy to work with. I have to work a weekend every once in a while from home just to be sure my duty are done to the best of my ability. However, for the most part, I go in at 8 a.m. and leave at 5 p.m. and my job ends there. Very flexible, can work from home or leave early, and the trust that everyone's busting their butt is a big part of that. It's my dream job. After years of crappy ones inside and outside the field after graduating college, I got really lucky. A friend of mine makes $45,000 a year in marketing. His entire job is making a newspaper slash TV slash internet ad saying, Who would like to try a new product? Sitting on his butt for several days waiting. Then when people respond, he sorts them by if they should qualify or not. Guys can't test women's deodorant and things like that. That's the end of his job. Everything else is done by another group. He has hours of paid free time he uses to code and do side projects. He went to school for eight years for math to get this job. I work data analytics. Today, I make 75k plus salary, good benefits, working Monday to Friday, 7 to 3.30, and all from home. Haven't worked a weekend or night or more than 40 hours in years. No commute, no traffic, no office drama, no dress code, no degree, no special training. Just an eye for patterns and fascination with data. Started my career 13 years ago doing outbound telemarketing for a credit card company. Nights and weekends for around $9 an hour. Basically the first job I could find with health insurance. About once a year I looked for something that was a little bit of a stretch and move for a raise. Master the job and move again. Going to school now for a degree only because my work will pay for it. I work as a landman in the oil and gas industry. While that title is sort of all-inclusive and covers a ton of different jobs, I spend most of my time researching the history of property to see who's owned it for the past 150 years and what they've done with it. Things like are there any mortgages, oil and gas leases, easements, etc. Oil and gas companies want this information so they can determine who to lease slash pay when they drill for oil. All of this information is available in county courthouses, so I spend about half my time there reading old documents. 
The rest of the time, I'm able to work from home. It's a very chill job. I don't really have a boss. No one bothers me when I'm working. And courthouses can be almost like libraries sometimes. It's also a very rewarding job because you're sort of figuring out a puzzle and get to see something through to completion before moving on to your next project. There are sometimes deadlines and priorities, but they're never too bad for me. And I always hit them. It can also get stressful when there's no work or you have to move around. But I still think it's worth it. Generally, most people have a degree, but not always. It's very much an industry that still relies heavily on networking. And I know several people who do what I do and make great money without a degree. I've made over 100k a year for about 5 years now, and I've only been doing it for 7. I'm a petroleum geologist. Six-figure salary right out of school for a 40-hour a week job. It still involves some stress because of how much money rides on my educated guesses. But for the most part, us geologists love what we do and don't stress a whole lot. Just so you know, low stress doesn't always equate to low effort. Anyway, my official job title is senior producer, but it should probably be wearer of many hats. In a given day, I write, shoot, edit, and produce between 7 and 12 unique videos, along with with all the associated assets, splash screens, and tie-in media. Said videos are then published to a handful of sites, after which I prepare and disseminate just over a dozen newsletters. Once that part's finished, I do back-end maintenance on a few of the pages in question, followed by some light community management. If I'm lucky, I'll get 15 minutes to rush out, grab lunch, and make my way back to the studio, after which I'll devote myself to editing the stories that our writers put together. That's followed by a focus on whatever one-off projects might be in the pipeline, which usually includes a fair amount of asset creation or adjustment, and a final look at the documentation associated with any of the above endeavors, which I'll update as necessary. When I finally leave at the end of the day, I'm exhausted. It's a lot of work, but I'm happy with the fact that I have creative control, and I'm pleased to be making something with an immediately visible end result. And most of all, I'm not bored. For me at least, there's nothing more stressful than boredom. I'm a carman. I inspect and repair freight cars. Most of the time, work is laid back and easy. Sometimes I have to work in crappy conditions like a heat wave or torrential rain or freezing temperatures. Sometimes I have to lift heavy stuff or do sustained hard labor, but those days are rare. Stress only comes when the yard is all messed up and the yardmaster wants us to magically unmess it, or when managers come snooping around to try and get you in trouble. Again, rare days. The job suits me and pays me enough to be comfortable. My schedule sucks, but they're hiring, so I'll finally have some seniority. I work for one of the world's largest board game companies. Most of my job is granting studios in other countries access to our files so they can translate them and sell them in their country's retailers and then pay us a royalty. I get to go on trips to check out their studios to make sure they're up to the job, go to a lot of game conventions, and literally am required to play games with the co-workers I love at least a couple times a week. The benefits are great, and being only two years out of college, the work experience and salary are good. I got my master's and luckily enough a friend of a friend just then needed someone who could do data analysis. So I moved to a small city in a poor state where most men graduate high school with little literacy or numeracy and end up going to work on farms or doing manual labor. I spend on average about 4 hours a day doing pretty basic calculations in Excel and get paid twice the average income for this town. It has its pros and cons. I meet tons of interesting people I wouldn't have otherwise come across and I have a very different perspective now on what I used to consider success, but it's also lonely, and I have a hard time relating my life to those people I meet. I work midnights as a direct support professional for people with developmental disabilities. 90% of the time I'm on Reddit or drawing or watching movies. Most of the time the guys in the group home are sleeping. It doesn't pay anything amazing, but 1025 plus benefits isn't all bad when all I have is a GED and a few hours of training. Some people couldn't do it. Too nervous around people who are definitely not neurotypical. One of the guys right now a few feet away is just rapidly rocking in a recliner as he watches TV and occasionally occasionally making noises, which I just realized would freak a lot of people out. My full job title is Export Compliance Executive at a medical device company. Sounds fancy, but in reality, a distributor asks for a document which has already been compiled by someone else. I just copy and paste. It's fantastic. 
I'm a program coordinator for desk operations at a large university. Essentially, I manage all of the desks in the dorms on campus. This entails lots of student employees whom I relate quite well with at my ripe old age of 22. The job is mainly email chains and meetings with an occasional difficult conversation. I get university benefits and just under 40k. To be fair, my cost of living is dirt cheap. I'm a dog walker in Los Angeles. I see the same 10 dogs every day, every week. So it's like I have 10 dogs of my own. Since my clients are dogs, they're always happy to see me, which I will never take for granted after years and years in retail. I get to be outside in the sunshine, listen to lots of podcasts, and I'm walking all day. I'm no Rockefeller, but I work part-time and it pays the bills and gives me a little extra money to play with. So I'm very grateful. I don't know if it's a good salary, but I take home about $30 an hour in tips dealing poker. My paychecks are usually $200 to $300 every other week, after benefits and taxes are paid for. You can take home over $5k a month just pitching cards to people and putting up with their whining. The job has completely worn me down after 12 years, but there's zero stress involved with it. Mine is way different than most of the other comments on here, but I make upwards of $120 a day just delivering pizza for Domino's in an incredibly affluent area of North Texas. Basically, getting paid to drive around and smoke. It's amazing. I'm an independent contract courier. My job is to drive to a list of animal hospitals, pick up blood samples, urine, stool, biopsies, etc., and then transport them to a medical laboratory for testing. I make $240 a day just driving around in my car. I'm a medical transcriptionist. I think the pay is very good considering how stress-free and easy the job is once you learn the lingo properly. I work in three shifts too, so the pay is even better. I'm self-employed, but I guess it still counts. I help small to mid-sized companies grow their business online, both strategically and operatively. The requirement is that they've already had a decent revenue stream and profit. Then, my recipe is very simple. Revamp their website, build content like blog posts and landing pages to get more organic traffic, plus buying ads, if the data shows it's profitable. The demand is so high that I've set up four rules. One, there shall be no demand that I'm physically present. Two, clients shall not tell me how many hours I need to work, they should be happy for the hours I allocate for them. Three, there shall be no deadlines. Four, I only take projects that I find fun. I can work from wherever I want, whenever I want, as long as I have some electricity and an internet connection. My clients are happy because I bring in good results that cover what they pay me. Some of my clients have internal statements saying we put our employees' well-being before business, so I never have to feel bad if I take a day off to do something I like. They rather encourage me to do it. I I could easily work 300%, but I choose to work half time. At this point, I should hire more people, and I probably will, but I enjoy my freedom a bit too much still. I recently got my job and I'm really lucky. I work for a university in admin and get about 60k a year and 17 super to respond to emails and the occasional phone call from students who need help. Sometimes it can be tricky issues, but a lot of the time I basically tell them stuff that can be found on our website, like their study dates. Or I explain how to submit forms and send their forms off to be processed. I love my job. I work in digital media marketing. I make okay money, around 80k, and work from home. Some days I'll have about 1-2 to two hours worth of work to do, but probably 2-3 to three days a week I do almost nothing. Sometimes I feel bad for how little I work compared to the credit I get, but a large part of my job is reactionary, so I figure as long as I'm there when I'm needed, then I'm earning my wage. I've also been doing this for 6 years, so I can do it with my eyes closed. I get no joy from it, but it's so easy and I work from home. So so, meh. I work in swimming pool repair. I get paid by the job, not by the hour. So if I want to mess around all day, I do. If I want to make a buttload of money, I bust my butt all day. I get to make my own hours, I quote my own prices, and I knock off early for a matinee or for a beer with friends whenever I want. I average about 75k a year. I work in software quality assurance. Pays about the same as developers, unless you're on top tiers or specialized, but way less stressful. Also, the hardcore programming autistics don't enter this field since it's not actual coding, so competition for good jobs is less. Most just run or write tests and tell nerds they're doing things wrong. 
I'm a teacher for students who don't give a crap because their parents are rich. It's often frustrating that they don't want to learn. But then again, pretty easy going because you can reuse old teaching plans without feeling guilty. Parents, students, and administration only get upset when I'm fed up and expect at least some of them to do their work. Currently, my contract rolls in desktop support. I'm not sure if I'm just lucky or great at my job, but nothing breaks and I only really spend 10 minutes a day total fixing things. This email won't send, that's because the email address is incorrect, that sort of stuff. I'm more here for a just in case scenario. It's okay, but I miss my previous roles on a service desk being hit with calls for eight hours a day. I get in, blink, and it's time to go home because it's so full on. The days go pretty slow here and I end up exhausting red it by lunchtime. But for $35 an hour at 21 years old, I can't complain. I'm a garbage man. I switch between a two-man truck and the scale house at the transfer section. I make 50 k a year to dump your trash and tell you where to dump your trash. It's a town job. We're one of maybe six towns in Connecticut that hasn't privatized trash collection. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.